So here's what I'm doing with all my money. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Ewan and on this channel we talk about personal finance and investing in the stock market. So if that's something that tickles your fancy then hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell and we can get on with the video. In this video I want to share with you what I'm doing with all of my money and the rationale behind all of my choices where I'm putting them, different pensions, different investments, different lifetime ices, etc, etc. So we go through my whole entire breakdown and how I plan to achieve financial independence. So hopefully you enjoy this video, but remember I'm not a financial advisor, I'm just a random dude on the internet. So please, please, please do your own research before investing your capital. So why am I making this video? Well, I'll take you back to a few days ago. I was sitting on the loo and of course, replying to comments. I mean, I was sitting at my desk replying to comments because no one takes their laptop in the bathroom, do they? Anyway, someone recently commented, have you made any videos on where you invest your money? Like, do you just invest all of it into dividend stocks or does some go into buying a house, forex trading, index funds, etc., etc.?" And I was like, nah. But then a light bulb came on in my head and I thought I could make that video. No, I should make that video. And now we are here. So. Here's what I'm doing with all my money. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split all of my money decisions into five different categories. So we've got debt, we've got housing, we've got pensions, we've got cash, and then we have my investments. Number one is no debt. Apart from my student loans, I have absolutely no debt. And I personally think that student loans are actually a tax because they only come out when you're earning a certain amount over 20, five and a bit K, and you don't actually have to pay the full amount. It's completely different compared to America, and I'm very thankful for that. So, number two. Is housing. So for housing, Ruby and I are actually saving and investing into a money box lifetime ISA. This scheme is run by the government and allows you to save and invest into a lifetime ISA, or a LISA as they call it, and they will give you a 25% bonus or a maximum of 1,000 pounds. I personally have taken advantage of this fully for the last two years, so I've had 1,000 pound each year extra bonus of 25% return, which is pretty darn good. Also, because I know that I'm gonna be holding it for longer than five years, I actually opened a stocks and shares ISA within the lifetime ISA, so I've been getting stock market returns as well. Because my monies are invested in funds, that money box choose. And currently I'm up 15%, so pretty darn happy about that too. I'm absolutely buzzing with this, and although we have no time limit and no ideal time to buy, we are just stacking paper and making that money, that free money from the government, and also the stocks and shares ISA that we've got it in. So within the LISA, that makes sense. And currently mine is sat at over 11,000 pounds, so I'll be super happy with that, a 40% return, which is mad. At some point we will want to buy and what we'll probably do is wait until we get to at least maybe 20k in each of our accounts and then think about buying from there but we do actually want to go traveling so it would be a silly time for us to buy like now perhaps but we have to wait for the apocalypse to be over and see if there's actually any of the world left but we will see so hopefully that beer thing is gone and we won't have to live in the apoc apocalyptic world that makes sense. <laughs> but I'm a true advocate for the lifetime ISA scheme because it's basically free money. So if you're looking to buy a house, then definitely have a look. Number three is pensions. So I actually have two pensions. One is a workplace pension and the other is a money box personal pension. And the reason for that is because I like money box. If you haven't already guessed that already. The workplace pension is with legal and general, and this is where I'm also invested in, in my dividend stock portfolio, because I do truly believe that if you use a product and you like it, etc., etc. So for example, I'm invested in Coke as well, because I like Coke. So it's one of those things, if you're a keen consumer of a product and you like the company and has a solid, solid background, then it is good to invest in companies that you use on your day-to-day -day life. The reason for this is you'll have a deeper knowledge of the fundamentals of the business, and this is highly, highly advantageous for an investor. The pension scheme at my job is actually pretty good. They match up to 6%. So I put 6% of my salary in, and they also contribute that as well. So I've taken full advantage of that, and now I have over 4,200 pounds in my pension at work, 
And considering I've only been there for about two years, it's around 12% of my overall salary each year. So I'm really quite happy with that. And if your company does a similar thing, you should definitely be taking advantage of the matching pension contribution scheme because you can basically get free money from your company. That'll help you down the line and you'll be thankful that you listened to my advice, I promise you. So there are two funds that my pension at work consists of and one is the LNG, so legal in general, PMC, Global Equity, FW5050 Index Fund G25, that is long, and the legal in general, PMC Multi Asset G25. I personally need to pull my finger out a little bit and look at these funds and see if they are still right for me and what my plan is down the line. And that reminds me, I think everyone should look at their pension and know what they're investing in while they're building their pension pot up because you never know what you might be investing in. You might not align with the values or you might have different goals. So just make sure you know what you're investing in when you're investing in your pension. And this pension will mature at 65 years of age for me. The second pension I have is a Moneybox personal pension. And I started this a few months ago because when slash if I go full time on YouTube, then I want to have the opportunity to pay into a pension because you never know when you might need it. And you get a tax allowance when you invest into your pension, your personal pension. So it's a good idea to check it out, especially if you're self-employed because you don't want to be making all this money now and then down the line have nothing to show for it. So in this pension, I have 238 pounds and 31 pence in a BlackRock Life Path 2049 2051 or 2049 and 2051 fund. Which means I'll be able to take this out when I'm around 55 years old. Currently I'm only putting in 10 pounds per week, which is obviously not a lot, but considering it is 30 years away, you never know what might happen. Number four is cash. Currently I have around 7K in cash, which includes living expenses, my emergency fund, and my leave to job fund. But once again, don't tell anyone. And also my traveling fund. The leave my job fund could technically be classed as investments because I will be investing it into my future and uh, future business on YouTube. But I'm just gonna call it cash for now because that's what it is, because I haven't actually sort of implemented that yet, but we'll get there. Also, in regards to my emergency fund, my YouTuber friend. Oh, you a YouTuber friend? You what, mate? Oh, scrap. <laughs> anyway, my YouTuber friend, Damien Talks Money. He recently made a few videos about NS and I premium bonds. So this is where you basically put your money in and then you could potentially win a prize or you get a sub par sort of interest rate and can be better than an average savings account, but it's potentially a good place for an emergency fund. Because obviously I don't want my emergency fund just sat in my bank account earning no interest. I need it to make it a little bit. Obviously I don't want to take a risk and put it all into the stock market in case I need to use it in the next three to six months. So that's one of the reasons that I'm exploring this avenue. So I need to look into that and probably watch a couple more of his videos. But if you wanna go check his channel out, then I'll leave it at the end or down below. Number five is my investments. So we'll start with the smallest one first. I actually invested into Moneybox as a company, so not just using their products, I actually invested in that company. So I bought 100 shares for around £3.50 each and received them in the last month or so. I've been using this platform for a long time, so I truly believe in the product and I believe in the concept and I believe that they will continue growing and growing because they are now introducing pensions and stuff like this, which are long-term products that make them money. So fingers crossed that they continue to do well and I can make some money off my investment. At the moment, the only way I can make money is if they decide to float on the stock exchange or the stock market so they need to do that in order for me to regain some or recoup my investment and make some money off it, hopefully, fingers crossed, which means it's a lot higher risk than say investing in Coca-Cola, but the money I put in was money that I could lose. So I anticipate not getting any of that back, but I'm hoping that it does well because I do believe in the product and I do believe that they will grow in the future. The second smallest is actually my stocks and shares ISA, which is in Moneybox. So I opened this a couple of years ago. This is why I've got more than one. 
and I'm not currently paying in it because you can only pay into one every single year, but it's still making money because it's invested in the stock market. So I'm still getting a decent return actually um, of 15%. And this totals up to around 416 pounds and 55 pence. What I plan to do with this is when it comes around to April, I will put more money back into my lifetime ISA. So all that money will go into my lifetime ISA and then I'll continue adding money that way because a 25% bonus is pretty nice. <laughs> Third is my trading two and two free shares. So this is actually in a general investment account because for some reason it's gone into there instead of the ISA, but I'm glad it's in there instead of the ISA just because I might need to use it as cash for my leave my job fund as i said earlier so that is why it's still there and i just want to say thank you to anyone who's ever used the link because i really appreciate it and it's come to this value so i'm super pleased because that's more than i ever thought i'd ever get and if you haven't signed up to trading 212 link in the description <laughs> the fourth and final part of my investments is my trading 212 portfolio and we've just breached 13,000 pounds as of today, which I'm really quite happy about. This portfolio down the line should pay me a decent dividend income and hopefully I'll be able to live with it. But it's a long way down the line, so I'm not, not paying too much attention. I'm still investing every single month and just building and building nice and slowly and we'll see you at a million. So that's all my different pots and that's what I'm doing with all my money. I have no debt and it will stay like that until I build a house or buy a house, which is not for a while, so I'm not too worried about that. I have a couple of pensions that I'll be letting grow in the background, just ignoring, letting them grow passively. And hopefully down the line, there'll be a nice big nest egg when I get there. I also have some cash for emergencies and also to reinvest back into my YouTube channel, which is very, very exciting. And hopefully with all this combined and my investments, I'll be financially independent in 30 to 40 years. And granted, it is a long way away, but I'm hoping that I can increase my income and make that sooner rather than later. Which is exactly what I'm doing with this YouTube channel, because this is a lot more scalable than my current job. The revenue possibilities are actually up to me. So I am responsible for making the revenue and I am responsible for growing the revenue. So that's something that's really exciting and the entrepreneurial spirit in me is very excited for that when that does come. One last thing I want to say is that I'm very fortunate to have been passed down a fair bit of cash which equates to quite a lot of what is here and that's the reason why there's a lot here in comparison to my wage but instead of using it but instead of using it all to buy a house, I decided to invest it and seek a better future for myself and for my future family. And I'm trying to make it work for us and for me instead of just buying a house. Buying a house is a societal norm and I don't think it's the best way of reaching financial independence, especially if you haven't got the money to invest as well. If you're only saving for a house and you're not investing, then why not? I think there should definitely be a mixture of both. So that is what I'm trying to do because you might have a house, but if you're still working till you're 65, then it's not really quite what you want. I want to be retired early and I also want to have the house at the same time. So it's one of those things that I need to do at the same time. So although I am saving for a house, I want to make sure that my money is working for me and compounding, compounding. Obviously there is a real estate rises and falls, etc., etc. So you can make money that way. But if you're not selling and you're not, and the asset that you bought a house is not producing any money, then it's not really an asset, is it? And if you want a proper explanation about this, then read Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, where he explains it probably a lot better than I do. But I think that it is the secret to wealth long term. Anyway, enough of me. If you have enjoyed this video and you want to comment if I've missed anything or you want me to explain a bit more, then comment down below like the video and subscribe as I'm trying to hit 10K by the end of the year. And all there is left to say is I'm not a millionaire yet, <laughs> but I'm trying to help you become one. So peace.
So I've split. So I've split all of my. So what I'll do is I'll split all of these.